Pets are great stress reducers, and so is painting. So why not combine the two? Well, the past couple days around here have been a little bit rough, and I just thought, wouldn't it be fun to just do some art therapy? We could all use some more beauty and joy in our lives, and art's a great way to get more of that in your home. So today I'm going to show you how you can have fun doing impressionist art of your pet, or maybe you want to make the perfect personalized gift for a pet lover. Of course, Cody is my favorite furry face, but I thought today I would start out showing you my friend's cat. This is Ghost, and you can follow him and his other three furry friends on Instagram, one of whom is a three-legged cat named Legolas, and they're over at catatonic underscore tails. Their antics are sure to make you smile. They're just beautiful creatures. Maybe you feel like you can't draw very well, but let me tell you, just like Chef Gusteau in Ratatouille says anyone can cook, anyone can paint. When you're painting animals, the best way to figure out how to draw animals is establish what shapes are there. So with Cody, you can kind of see a triangle here, and then with his snout, here's another triangle. His ears are kind of triangles. Over here, there's kind of like an oval. A bulldog would have a very square-shaped face. A Pomeranian would have a round face. So you just gotta figure out what shapes are in there. Now this is a pretty simple shape. It wouldn't be too hard for most people, even if you're not really great at drawing, to just sketch that out. But for the purposes of illustrating my point, I'm gonna show you a shortcut. I've taken this and I put it up to the window backwards and I just traced the outline and really thick pencil lines. And now what you can do to transfer your image onto a canvas, turn it over like this, take something smooth and blunt like a pen cap and go over where you made your markings. And you can, and you can kind of see how it lightly made the outlines. You might need to do thicker pencil outlines than I did, but that's the basic idea anyways. Another reason that I've chosen this very monochromatic picture is because I think it's really interesting how many colors can be reflected in white. And this is an example. This is an oil of, of a swan and you would think, oh, well that's just white, but no, there's definitely like browns and blues. So I think it's kind of fun to challenge myself to see the deeper colors. The key to doing a more impressionist picture is using large paint brushes and kind of holding it out more instead of being really precise and like drawing, right? So impressionism is really about giving an impression or a feeling when you look at a picture. Monet is just one example of an impressionist painter and I tend to be more of a realist painter and I like to almost photographically copy something. So this is actually gonna be a challenge for me, and if you've never painted before, it might actually be easier for you to just say, hey, these are the colors and the shapes, instead of being tempted to really realistically paint. If it helps you to squint, that's kind of how I figure out how I wanna do an impressionist painting, and step back from the details and get just the basics down first. You can do it abstract if you want, it doesn't really matter, as long as you're having fun, and if you're doing this as a gift for someone, make sure you just include whatever special characteristics their pet has. So I've just put some acrylics on a paper plate. These are just the cheapest kind you can get at the craft store. They're like 50 cents a tube. I find them easier to work with than watercolors and oils. So they're a great paint for a beginner to work with. So here's an example of some pop art and you could do your pet that way or you could just use a realistic background. I'm not gonna take this very literally at all. I'm going to add a lot of color in there and use really large brush strokes and just have some fun with it. Now, if you wanna do this at home but you don't have a canvas, no problem. You probably have one of these and you can cut this apart and use the back of the cardboard and it'd be brown, which is a great underpainting color anyways. So don't ever think that something might make or break art. Think outside of the box or in this case, inside the box if you need a surface to paint on. So I'm just gonna pick a color that I really like and make that the background. Now for my little ball of fluff. First I'm gonna go in there with some pink. I'm just gonna be inserting color wherever I see it reflected. And even if you don't see it reflected, you can make it up. So I'm going to mix um, purple with white because purple's a great color for shadows. You're like, wow, she is off her rocket. What is she doing after today? <laughs> I am off my rocket. And I'm going to add some silver to my purple. I think that would be pretty. <laughs> I want to encourage you that just like in life, sometimes our paintings don't look that great, sometimes the situation looks like it can't possibly turn out well, 
but in the end, if we keep going and working with it and focusing on the light, it will turn out to be something worthwhile. And if nothing else, you've learned something in the process. Are you holding your breath going, is this gonna look ridiculous like a purple blob? Sometimes I hold my breath too, but I keep going. You, you're doing that? That looks so amazing. <laughs> it looks almost green. But it's purple. It kind of looks white. Mm -hmm. It makes purple wet white. Mm -hmm. And it gets the brown and that looks nice. Mm -hmm. Can I okay. what does epic mean? Epic means like amazing. Well then your painting is epic. <laughs> you're epic. No, you're no, painting you're epic. is epic. <laughs> your thing is epic. I love it. Your thing is epic. It looks like light shined on it that was, the light was purple mm -hmm. and i like it it looks almost just like it you're putting a little bit yellow mm -hmm. why are you putting yellow mom mm -hmm. it looks better without the yellow so you should probably put the yellow <laughs> It does look better. What do you mean it does look better? It? No, what, what I mean is, you, when you cover up part of it, it looks better. Whenever you've done it, I know it will look epic. How did you learn the word epic? My friends always called me, you're epic. <laughs> Hey, if you're enjoying this video and it's making you feel inspired to paint or maybe just relaxed watching, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button and click subscribe because it helps my channel to grow, helps other people find this content, and my desire is to share uplifting content that will hopefully encourage others. Thanks so much for your help. All right, so even though this is overall a very light painting, just like the photograph, what I tried to establish first was the areas of darkness, the shadows, and then I ended with the highlights, what was reflecting the most amount of sunlight. So I like how this kind of has a dreamy feel with the kitty cat sleeping. Now I'm gonna be painting my dog Cody, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start with the dark things before I end with the highlights. And I'm just gonna start with the yellow in the background. I can see it comes more than a third of the way in and about a fourth of the way down to behind his ears. From here, I'm just gonna go in and put the big shades in the background. So just kind of squint and look for the dark areas and then put those down first. And of course, his little nose. And if I was to cut this into thirds, I would put it a little bit lower than the half mark of this first third. So this is just going to be my basic underpainting. You might be thinking, Amy, he's a light dog. Why are you going brown? But just like the other one where I started out with the darkest value, I'm gonna build on it and put lighter on top. It looks dry pretty quickly and then I can build on top of it.
If you're feeling stuck on a painting, it's totally okay to take a break and get some distance so that you can come back with fresh perspective. I'm gonna go back to what I said about um, the kitty cat and how purple shows the shading better. So I'm gonna try to do that. I like using a really dry brush to make this look more like fur. <laughs> If you don't like what you painted and it's still wet, go ahead and get a tissue and get it wet. Erase it out by rubbing. My daughter's already claimed the kitty cat as hers. She hasn't seen this one yet though, so I'm gonna wrap it up and surprise her for her birthday. And I hope that you enjoy whatever you create. I'm sure it's gonna be one of a kind and wonderful. And if you're gonna give it as a gift, you can bear to part with it. I'm sure the recipients will feel very honored that you would spend your time and your creativity and effort in painting them their own personalized impressionist pet portrait. I hope you enjoyed the process of seeing me paint this kitty cat and it just give you some ideas of how you can have fun with lots of color and a picture of your pet or someone else's pet for our gift. Whether you're joining me now during these coronavirus pandemic creativity sessions or far in the future, I hope you know that you matter, you're not alone, and that your perspective and creativity enrich the world. Hope you have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe below button and also hit the notification bell so that you'll know when the next video is up. I aim to post new content about intentional creative living every Friday. See you next time.